So let's talk about these two devices, the Garmin and the Whoop strap in terms of a 24 seven tracker. Of course, there's some major differences. Like I got the Garmin for endurance for Ironman training. We're not going to go into those metrics. I just want to talk about the metrics that people can rely upon for their 24 seven tracker. So we're talking sleep. We're talking recovery. We're talking cardiovascular strain. We're talking kind of those daily things that are important to people to monitor their daily health. Now, first, let's talk about why I would prefer one or the other. Firstly, the Whoop strap. The Whoop on me isn't going anywhere. I love its versatility. I love its comfort. I love the way you can charge it on the wrist. It is the state of the art in terms of charging, and it's way more passive. Like One thing that the Whoop does so well is activity detection, where I don't have to actually go in, hit a button, just like a lot of people do on the Apple Watch, and know that I'm doing some sort of activity, it senses it. That's what I would expect from something monitoring my activity day to day. And again, it is nondescript. I am someone who prefers to wear more traditional watches. So taking what I would consider a 24 seven tracker off at times, and you're missing a large amount of data isn't ideal because I do like more traditional watches and the more comfort to wear, it's easier to sleep in. So I definitely prefer that over something larger like a watch. Like this is the Garmin 955 Solar that I'm wearing. I had the Garmin Phoenix. No way in hell I'm sleeping in that thing. I've worn the Apple Watch Ultra. Just I want to mention the Apple Watch because a lot of people I'm sure are going to come at me for that and why I'm not doing a video on that. And it, it's just too big. Now, why I prefer the Garmin? Well, it's an all encompassing device. Like if I didn't have the Whoop strap and I was just looking at Garmin, I would be 100% happy. When I'm looking at the metrics side by side, something to consider in this video, they align pretty damn close, like in terms of 95% agreeability in both metrics, whether they're actually 100% similar of the underlying calculations or not. It's telling me the same thing and reaching the same conclusions, which is fantastic. So the Garmin all encompassing with my race calendar, it's got on. So it's considering what's my recovery in terms of what I've got upcoming. I, I do. I love it. I love it. And again, it's got a screen, so I don't have to pick up my phone on days where I want to look at my data. I, I can just look down, hit it. And this is a touch screen and look at whatever I want. So that's just something that a lot of people would consider, but I like to minimize my screen. So if you're someone who doesn't mind it, then yes, the Garmin is going to be great steps. This isn't for me. This is more for you. If you are someone that wants to track steps, I think you should be getting your exercise doing other exercises. But if you want to monitor steps, the Garmin has it, the whoop doesn't. And that's it for Garmin. All right, so before we get into the metrics, what, how they're similar and different, well, let's talk about battery life. So both devices, multi-day. That's one of the reasons why I'm not even talking about the Apple Watch. Even the Apple Watch Ultra, if you're using the capabilities and functionality of that device, it's going to be a hard stretch to get through two full days. So if you're using the GPS, using the music, that's going to drain the battery. That's why I don't even factor it in my considerations or ring. Also great multi-day device, so that can just stay on your finger and then you take it off occasionally and it charges pretty quickly. Just a FYI, again, I do have videos on the Aura Ring, just not in this comparison video. So the Garmin 955 Solar that I have has been lasting me over seven days. And I'm even using the GPS where I record every second, which does require more battery capacity. The Whoop Strap, on the other hand, lasts me about four to five days. But one thing that I do love is doesn't come off my wrist, has that slip on battery pack, which I think is the absolute state of the art in wearable charging technology. I wish more devices could figure out a way to do that. However, the 955 with the solar, it just isn't that big a deal that I occasionally put it on. Usually there's some sort of reason where I need to take it off and wear like a more traditional watch if I'm going out on on the town or whatever. I'm just generally not using the device. So that's where it gets charged. But the downside of that is you do lose a little time in the 24 seven metrics. So the algorithms of a Garmin or any other wearable device when you take it off has to fill in the gaps as best they can to do all your metrics. So it makes sense. The more you wear a device without any holes in the daily gaps, it's going to have more accurate information for you. So that's the only thing that's really different. Now let's talk about sleep and let's get into the metrics. I'm 
putting this as number one because in terms of recovery, in terms of mental health and everything else, sleep is the most important thing to monitor. There are issues monitoring sleep stages. Again, I don't think you're going to get 100% accurate device on if you're in REM, deep, light, when you're awake. Just as long as it's consistent, you're using the device and looking at the data as needed, that's going to be the best you're going to be able to get. Both devices have issues with 100% accuracy. There is a channel called Quantify Scientist that I do recommend checking out. He's very brilliant in terms of how he's quantifying the data and the issues with tracking all this information. But one thing that I do give the advantage towards whoop is this tracking of sleep debt. The book, why we sleep by Matthew Walker really opened my eyes to this. Listen, we have to get eight hours of sleep, whether you like it or not, whether your life allows it and the sleep debt is going to accumulate, whether you sit there and you're like, Hey, I just can't get eight hours. It's just a thing, unfortunately, and whoop does a great job that based on your training, your strain, if you can't get that sleep, you're going to get the sleep debt accumulating and it's going to add on to the next day, telling you how much more sleep you need later on, whether it's naps or however the hell you can get that sleep. So I would give advantage to whoop in the sleep realm, which again is incredibly important to me in terms of someone who's doing a lot of work, um, mentally intensive and doing the endurance training. So training readiness and recovery. Training readiness is the metric that Garmin uses and recovery is the one that Whoop uses. And this is gonna tell you how well you're prepared to take on the day. So if I look at Whoop recovery, it's gonna factor in HRV, resting heart rate, respiratory rate and sleep. Training readiness on the other hand, sleep, HRV, acute load on the body. Um, And that's going to be over a span of time, sleep score history and stress history. So it does have more underlying metrics. And I got to tell you, it's, it's odd that when it's like you're optimally ready or you have a green recovery, they seem to align pretty well. Occasionally, I will get some differences, but that's why I did another video on how you should be using your recovery score and your own anecdotal perceptive score that I would say is how you should go about doing your day. Like we don't want this paralysis by analysis. I don't want this device telling me how I should feel. Some days I got to push it and I just need to marry the two things. Now, if both devices give me red scores, then there's got to be a problem. And that hasn't happened, thankfully, again, because I'm using these devices to help monitor and accelerate my training but they're close despite the underlying metrics underneath the parent metric of training readiness for Garmin or the whoop recovery score. They're both incredibly similar and useful on my day to day. I try to keep both as high and green as possible to keep me going. Uh, Stress monitor is one that just came out. They both seem pretty similar. They use your heart rate and it sees that if you're not exercising, then there's gotta be something going on if you have a elevated heart rate above your standard resting heart rate. And Whoop just came out with this, but Garmin's had it for quite some time. It's something I personally don't monitor, but if that's something that interests you, if you're a high stress individual, then both do a great job on that. Training status and strain score. So the Whoop strain score is this logarithmic analysis of your heart rate over the day and how much load you're putting on your body. Garmin also has what they call their training status, which is your VO2 max, your HRV status, and the acute load on your body. Both are measuring the amount of strain you are putting on your body. So they've both been useful. And again, they're both similar despite how they want to go about accumulating that score and calculating it. It's either or. Now, between training readiness or recovery, I will give the advantage to Garmin because one thing that I really love in the metrics is recovery time. Like, so it it understands your baseline recovery and how your body should be feeling and calculates, okay, this is going to how long it's going to take me to get back to what would be deemed 100%. Now, lastly, let's talk about some key differences. Whoop has these really cool daily health metrics. Um, one of them is body temperature. So women 
monitoring their menstrual cycle seem to prefer something with a body temp that Garmin does not have. So that is just some feedback that I've gotten over the course of the years that I've done these videos. Almost stepped away without the major one. The Whoop is a subscription model. That's what I hate most about this device. I don't like monthly bills. You can pay in annual installments or monthly installments or whatever, but the Garmin, you're just gonna buy flat out. Now, the advantage of that, no monthly subscriptions. You own it, you own it. You don't have to pay anything extra. The advantage of this, I had the Whoop 3.0 when it came out, and then because I'm on subscription, when the Whoop 4.0 was ready to go, it was shipped to me, no questions asked, as long as I had a subscription, and I didn't have to worry about wanting to upgrade the device. So everyone out there with a Whoop device should have the latest and greatest, whereas when you're using these devices, whether it's an Apple Watch or Garmin, Koros or whatever, you're only gonna get the device if you buy a whole new device. So that's an annoyance of mine, what your preference is, just wanted to put that out there. So when I look at both devices and I look at the data, they align really well and I would be 100% happy with each. Thanks for watching.